This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to InTheMoneyStocks.com. Welcome, and this is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is 11, 11 16, 2020. Well, we're looking at a market uh, rally that uh, doesn't seem to, it's kind of like, Nick, that, uh, that planet destroyer in uh, Star Trek. It just takes bad news and uh, generates it and turns it into energy, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's a good analogy. It looks like uh, today's another big Monday. And every time we get a Monday that's up, though, we get a lot of backing and filling throughout the rest of the week. So we'll look for a little bit of that. Plus, I want to point out, Kerry, this coming Friday, which will be uh, the 20th of November, it will be options expiration for uh, the month of November. So it's that time of the month again. All right. We can never get away from that. And so you think, uh, so you think, because what, what did the markets do today? Probably tell us so, that first. So you had the Dow Jones Industrial Average have a pretty big day, up about 470 points. That's a gain of 1.6%. The Russell 2000 was really strong today. It looks like the cash Russell up $41. That's a gain of 2.37%. I always say when the Russell shows leadership, that's a strong market. And that represents small cap companies in the United States. So great day for the Russell. That is, continues to soar. And that's a new closing high here, a new 52-week closing high for the Russell. Yep, that's a good one. And then you had the NASDAQ just up eight-tenths of 1%. But it struggled early, but it did catch a late bid. We did see some weakness today in some select NASDAQ tech names. But uh, overall, um, it did carve out a positive session. And then you had the S&P 500 with a pretty good day, up 1.25%. Um, not a bad session whatsoever for the S&P 500. And um, a good day overall. Volume was, wasn't terrible. It wasn't super heavy, but it was decent. All right, so what do we uh, glean from the volume statistics, Nick? Well, I, I think right now the markets are continuing to rally. We talked about, you know, I was looking for a bottom right before the election. That's exactly what we got, and I don't see the rally really ending anytime soon. Now, we're getting to a little bit of what we call an overbought condition, so we may get some backing and filling. But overall, I, I think the markets look good here, and they, they continue to hold up pretty well. Yeah, pretty remarkable. So I guess they're optimistic about uh, a Biden uh, presidency, huh? Well, I don't think it's so much that. I think the market right now is optimistic about a vaccine. So today you had news come out saying that Moderna's vaccine is 95 percent effective. Last Monday we had news that Pfizer's vaccine was 90 percent effective. And um, again, you know, I, I don't know whose vaccine is more effective. I'm not taking either one. But uh, I will say this much. The market's like that news, and that's really the bottom line. Um, you also have a market that thinks they're going to have gridlock come uh, if Joe Biden is elected, so he really won't be able to do all that much. But um, you know, we'll see how it plays out. Right now, the way I look at it is just follow the charts. Charts are still good. If the charts change, I'll let you know. Then you want to reverse course. Yeah, well, the market's kind of twisted in that regard. To me, it's like uh, giving your teenager the keys to Ferrari. To, a, to the Ferrari and a bottle of uh, Jack Daniels and hoping that he's going to return it to you in one piece. Well, the markets have, are, are very, very efficient. And um, again, uh, when they change, you know, you want to be able to change with them. But you always got to stick with the trend as long as you can. Uh, the old saying says, trend is your friend until the end. And right now the trend is up. All right. So um, sectors that we're looking at uh, – our disfavored sectors, travel and such, is that uh, did that do well today? It did very well today. In fact, you had um, when you take a look at the airline stocks, which really airlines and cruise cruise liners, uh, they're really the bellwether. Southwest Airlines up a dollar seventy today. That's that's a huge move. Um, all the airlines look really strong right now. Delta Airlines up a dollar fifty four. Even American Airlines, really, which is a, a dog with fleas, that was up fifty five cents today. So all the airline stocks acted very, very well. And, um, 
you know, I, I have, and I don't want to mention, I, I forgot to mention here, uh, United Continental up $2. I mean, that's a great day, 5% move. So airline stocks acted well, hotels acted well, uh, the travel booking companies like uh, Priceline and, and uh, well, they call booking now, uh, but e Expedia, they all did well. So these, these stocks are all strong today and, um, you know, good day overall. Uh, interesting. And well, logically, if the vaccine comes out next week, just say, how long before it really has an impact, Nick? Well, I, I don't think it's even going to come out, you know, next week. But but the market anticipates forward. And right now what the market's thinking is, wow, there's a vaccine out there. And, yeah, COVID cases could be on the rise or the flu is on the, on the rise. But this COVID thing could be somewhat under control with the vaccine, and the market's just pricing it in. And that's what the markets do. They're always looking about six months ahead. Um, sometimes it's even a little bit more than that. But markets are very, very efficient. So I, I'd say this, Kerry, uh, when the vaccine is actually out and being distributed, there's a good chance we might have a sell the news event in the market. You know, that could be a time where the market just is done. It's topped out because right now the market's climbing the wall of worry. Uh, when the vaccine finally becomes released and it's distributed, you know, more, more often than not, you might see a sell the news event and the markets will go down. Yeah, that's an interesting thing. But, of course, nobody's looking at that point now, right? They're just no. letting it ride. <laughs> yeah, of course not. Nobody's looking at that right now. The professionals – you know, we're going to look at that when that time comes. And, you know, again, we're going to evaluate the chart when that happens and we'll see where we are. As you know, I'm always working timing factors out and I have a decent idea of when things are going to shift. But right now the party goes on and, and markets are up. All right. So the party goes on. We don't need to say much about gold and silver. They were essentially flat today. There's no real news. But we do need to talk about uh, Warren Buffett. Yeah, so Warren Buffett um, just released his 13F filing, and this is a time of the year where you start to get all these hedge fund managers disclosing their positions and updating their portfolio. So it looks like Warren Buffett went ahead and he bought some Bristol Myers, he bought some Merck, some AbbVie, and some Pfizer. He also added T-Mobile to his list and uh, Snowflake. So that's really his new positions here. It looks like... Uh, he increased some positions in a few positions as well. Bank of America, General Motors, Kroger, he added to, and then he closed Costco. So he sold out of Costco and he decreased some positions in Wells Fargo, Apple, JP Morgan, Barrick Gold, which is uh, one of his gold positions, the first gold position I can remember him in in quite a while, if any. And uh, he, he, he cut that down to a 12 million from 21 million. And uh, he also uh, decreased his position in PNC, uh, DeVita, and a couple of others, but uh, smaller names. Yeah. So uh, what do you glean from, uh, from Buffett's realignment, for lack of a better term, of his portfolio? Well, it looks like he, he went really into these, uh, these pharma names. So, um, you know, I, I wonder what he's thinking there. But, you know, he's very aligned with Bill Gates and the rest of those guys. So he's probably big and hot on the vaccine take. So well, we'll have to wait and see. But, you know, for me, I always look at the charts, but I find it rather interesting to see what he owns and what he sells out of. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll take it in stride here. But I was kind of surprised that he did cut his – position in Barrick Gold from, you know, 20.92 million down to 12 million. So quite surprising there. I, I don't know his cost basis on that one. So that would be interesting. But um, nonetheless, uh, we'll, we'll see what he does going forward. That was pretty fast, too. He just bought it like last month or the month before. It was less than two months. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what it is. But, you know, Barrick Gold has been pulling back since August. So, I'm not even sure if he's, you know, in the money all that much on this position unless he got in it earlier. So, uh, you know, we, we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. But all in all, uh, that that's the news coming out of Warren Buffett today. And we have a lot of other 13F filings being released. But it looks like um, most of the listeners it, pretty much enjoy when we talk about the uh, the mm -hmm. Buffett holdings. Yeah, well, everyone, it's like uh, that old saying. Remember when uh, E.F. Hutton speaks? Everybody yeah, people listens. listen. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, well, when Buffett uh, talks, 
everybody listens, but he hasn't been talking much lately, and you haven't seen him on a lot of interviews or anything, you know? Yeah, he's been very low-key lately. Uh, really, I haven't really seen much of him at all since uh, maybe March or April um, as far as coming out in public or saying a whole lot. So we'll see uh, if, he, if he does make any announcements uh, soon, but everybody's always interested and, and wants to see what Buffett is doing. Yeah, yeah, well, this could be a case of so goes Buffett, so goes the market. Uh, you got to wonder, he's buying BOA, Bank of America, and I don't know, what uh, you think the uh, rotation now into financials is going to pick up steam? Is well, he's owned, he's, bank, he's owned Bank of America. He just added to his position. So uh, basically, you know, and, and the financials have acted really, really well the last couple of weeks. So they've, they've done good. Bank of America, in fact, today was up 2%. So, I mean, the bank stocks have been uh, doing much, much better recently. I mean, over the last week or so, but prior to that, they have not really done that great. Yeah, they've been uh, the dog with fleas in the market they, for sure. They, ha they have been. They've been a laggard in a big way, and you could call it dog with fleas. That's what I like to term them, uh, the term that I like to use. So, they have been a big, big laggard. But, uh, you know, the last week or so, uh, JP Morgan in particular, has really, really been uh, a very, very good uh, performer. And I believe he also owned that, but he decreased his position uh, in JP Morgan from 22.2 million down to just 0 0.97 million. So that's quite a cut. Insignificant holding for him at that. Well, that's at interesting. This, at this point, yeah. That's very interesting. And we could very well be seeing what you've been speaking about for quite some time and that is a rotation out of big tech and into other sectors like banking, travel, and and other things, and big pharma too. Yeah, well, you know, I, I've I've stayed away from you know most most of the big tech. I own one tech position at this stage of the game, and um, you know, again, technology. You you, you could see that rotation has been going on for a while, and we've told everybody in here, you know, value is probably where you want to look. So. Uh, it's been quite something, and you know we'll continue to just watch that money flow. All right. Well, I guess we will leave it at that. We'll pick up tomorrow where we left off, and make sure you go take a look at Nick's site in themoneystocks.com. The Twitter feeds at itms at Nick Santiago zero one at Kerry Lutz, and Nick will talk to you tomorrow. Sounds good, Kerry. And don't forget, send us your emails kl at kerrylutz.com. And so concludes another episode of Daily Market Wisdom with Master Trader Nick Santiago. Be sure to go to his website, InTheMoneyStocks.com. Don't forget the Twitter feeds, at ITMS and at NickSantiago01.